I'm Marielle, I'm Melissa, and you're watching Devil Talks. SPF. SPF stands for Sun Protecting Factor. SPF is the measurement of protection against UVB and UVA in certain circumstances and the radiation that they emit from the sun. Most people think a higher number of SPF is better protection, but what does that number actually mean? The number next to the SPF represents the protection you have against exposure than if you didn't wear SPF. SPF of 30 will give you a protection factor of 96.7% of UVB radiation according to SunSmart Australia. Anything above won't give you a significant difference of protection. So when you're actually considering how much sunscreen you should be using on any location of your body, it is often recommended about a teaspoon amount per limb is recommended. Now when you're looking at an entire body, it's about 35 mils or 7 teaspoons of sunscreen. And this is often recommended 20 minutes before any type of sun exposure. Ultraviolet radiation is what is absorbed by the skin from the sun. The ultraviolet radiation is what drives inflammation. And by driving inflammation, it what essentially causes the destruction of your collagen within your skin which then accelerates aging, it accelerates the onset of wrinkles, but ultimately through prolonged exposure to the sun, it's what damages your DNA. And damaging the DNA means that over time can actually accumulate into uh, skin cancer. Following on from what Maria said, prolonged UV exposure will give you a tan. However, despite what many Australians believe, there is nothing healthy about a suntan. Tanning is a sign that you have been exposed to the sun long enough to damage your skin. This will eventually cause a loss of elasticity leading to wrinkles, a sagging and yellow discoloration to the skin as well as brown patches or pigmentation. A tan will offer limited protection against UV, typically an SPF of 3, and it does not actually protect your skin from the sun or UV damage which can lead to skin cancer. So when we are looking at what actually protects our skin from the sun, we've got two main differential factors from sunscreen. Technical sunscreen allows the skin to absorb the UV rays, but changes the heat and it's often released as infrared rays. Now this means that our skin will then bounce back the radiation that it absorbs. Chemical sunscreen is often lightweight, it's blendable, but the application is often required 20 to 30 minutes prior to sun exposure so that your skin can actually absorb the benefits to it. In some particular cases, chemical sunscreens actually irritate the skin, so it's not often recommended for over-the-eye use. Now, when we are looking at physical sunscreen, which is also then considered natural sunscreen, it is often based with zinc or titanium uh, nanoparticles. These nanoparticles are non-carcinogenic, so you can use them over a long period of time and it does not affect your skin whatsoever in the long term. They're often made with smaller microns um, and it's often less reflective in some cases. Broad spectrum sunscreens is what gives you protection against UVA and UVB rays. UVB rays hit the dermis and this is where you'll get that um, redness and swelling, that sunburn, um, response from UV damage and this will also lead to sunspots and freckles. UVA will hit just below the dermis going a little bit deeper and over time and long um, exposure of sun without protection this will lead to wrinkles, um, changes in texture of the skin giving that leathery appearance. According to the Cancer Council Australia there are five measures we need to do in order to protect ourselves from UVA and UVB damage. They are slip on sun protective clothing, slop broad spectrum SPF 20 minutes before exposure, slap on a hat, seek shade, slide on sunglasses.
Well, hopefully you guys have learnt something about sunscreen and why it's important for your skin. And regardless of age, race or genetic heritage, everyone does need it. So, thank you for watching Dermal Talks and we'll see you next week. Bye! Bye.